Hi I am Derman and today we are going to try to get closer to understanding what consciousness is, by understanding what it isn't. I personally believe we can't understand what consciousness is, but we can for sure understand what it isn't, and that at least gets us closer to what it is. First of all, just so we are on the same page, by consciousness I don't mean the voice in your head we know is our inner monologue or your moral compass. When someone really tries to understand what it is, people often feel as if their consciousness is an inner observer, a self that is able to experience the world through your senses. This is not entirely wrong, but forget it for now. One of the few things we do know for sure about it, is that consciousness goes away when we fall asleep without dreaming, under anesthesia or death and comes back when we are awake. To get closer to what it is, let's start by taking away things which we know consciousness isn't. Consciousness is not your senses or the experiences they bring. We can see that people who lack sight or hearing are just as conscious as the rest. As an example we have Helen Keller, she was born deaf and blind, yet she was able to live a remarkable life by communicating through touch alone. We can go further and picture ourselves as deaf, blind and numb, no senses at all yet still be awake and fully present. Here's an extra thought that bothers me every once in a while to help you visualize this scenario. A person who is born completely blind from birth does not see a black screen like we do when we close our eyes. A person who is blind from birth sees exactly what you see through your knee right now. You don't, just like a blind person. You can't picture it, but if you just accept it you get a better sense for the true absence of conscious experience. Consciousness is not your cognitive functions. By cognitive functions I mean your memory, thoughts, emotions, perceptions or even your ability to understand forms and shapes, recognize people, reason, learn, and everything else that your mind is able to do. We assume that the cognitive functions of our mind are indeed our consciousness itself but that notion is probably not true. We can assume this because there have been many cases of people lacking some or many of these functions due to medical conditions but they are still awake and conscious. Note that we take these functions for granted but they go a lot deeper than you think, your brain even constructs the idea that you are a separate entity from your environment. And many report that even this notion dissolves when taking hallucinogenics. Many of these conditions, but not all, fall under the term agnosia. Agnosia is defined as the inability to process sensory information to perceive and understand, identify objects, persons, smells and more. Let's simulate what suffering from visual agnosia is like. This is a picture of a dog, pause the video, try and see the dog. I have not edited this image at all but your brain is confused by it, it's unable to perceive it as a dog as the shape seem to form a hellish creature instead. However if I flip it, and draw over it, boom, there is your dog. Note that your eyes are perfectly fine but still you weren't able to perceive the dog in the image. That's what it's like to suffer from visual agnosia, your eyes are fine, but the information makes no sense. In this same eerie way there are many conditions like visual agnosia for very specific brain functions. I'm going to list some of these conditions so that you get a sense of how naked your bare consciousness is since we can rule all these functions out because we can clearly see that people with these conditions are still conscious. Not every single one will be an example of agnosia by the way. Prosopagnosia the inability to perceive faces, Brad Pitt has it. Acantopsia the inability to perceive motion or movement. Music agnosia the inability to perceive music, they literally can't hear it like you couldn't see the dog. Aphasia the inability to communicate yet be able to think with words coherently. Aphantasia the inability to imagine pictures in your mind's eye. Auditory agnosia the inability to understand and discriminate sounds. And there are many more. Each is associated with a very specific brain region, describing a very specific brain function that leads us to the idea that anything you ever feel, think, experience or do is not your consciousness itself. Here's an extra thing that bothers me about it, consciousness is not even a continuous thing and we can see this is true because of the exceptional case of Clive Waring. Clive Waring used to be a musician, musicologist, tenor and keyboardist, an all-round musical genius, until one day in 1985 he suffered irreversible brain damage to his hippocampus, an area of the brain responsible for short-term memory due to an infection. Clive now has a 30-second memory, he is unable to form new memories and believes to have just woken up from a comatose state, every 30 seconds. In a documentary made about him Clive repeatedly states that he just woke up, 
that this is his first moment of consciousness, we see this reflected on his diary in which he repeatedly writes the time followed by a statement that reflects his first moment of consciousness, that this time he is truly awake, just to wake up again and again. We can also see how he reflects on how his illness has been just like being dead for 20 years. His condition is truly heartbreaking. It seems that without memory, consciousness is not continuous. It seems to be a passing moment and I find that terrifying. It's as if death meets us every 30 seconds but our memory fools us so that we believe otherwise. So what are we left with now that we have thrown everything away? We have gotten rid of our senses and our experiences, as well as all our cognitive functions, even our sense of self. Everything is completely absent, not even black as in the example of the man who was born blind. Try and picture how it would be like to find yourself in this state of total lack of experience, thought, or function yet still be awake. Whatever you are left with in this state must be your raw consciousness. This means that you and me could switch consciousnesses right now and we wouldn't be able to notice at all because our identity, memories and everything else I mentioned would remain unchanged since those are separate from your consciousness. We would switch and immediately believe we have always been the same person. In fact, our consciousness could have come into existence at this very moment and our brain would make us believe that it has always been that way instead. Like when we wake up in the morning, I cannot find words to describe this nugget of raw being we are left with. Remember you can't feel this thing since feeling is just another artifact that you can do without. I believe that contemplating this state of total lacking of every function and trying to understand this little nugget you are left with is the closest we can get to a gut sense of what consciousness is. That's all for now, in a following video we will take the opposite approach and try to understand consciousness only by looking at what we know for sure about it. Consider supporting me on Patreon so I can do more of these more often. Take care, Derman.